the same. Uh, maybe uh, we slowly start the seminar. So uh, welcome to uh, Feza Gürsey Center Higher Structures Seminar Series. And today our speaker is Will Donovan from Yao Mathematical Sciences Research Center attached to Qinghao University in Beijing. And his talk title is Homological Comparison of Resolution and Smoothing. And we thank him and yeah, please Will, yeah. Thank you very much um, for the invitation. Um, and uh, my talk is on uh, some work in progress. Uh, let me write, um, I'll be uh, writing on the iPad like this. I hope you can see. Um, and um, this uh, project is quite uh, technical, um, but uh, my aim is to give um, some um, taster of the different things involved, um, some geometry, uh, some homological algebra. Uh, so please um, interrupt if there are particular things that uh, um, interest you or you'd like me to uh, um, say more about. Uh, so first, I wanted to give um, a feeling for the um, the terms in the title um, of resolution and smoothing uh, in um, algebraic geometry, especially. Uh, so uh, an example, which is nice because we can uh, draw it, although it took me quite a while to uh, to draw this um, this surface here, this x y equals t. Um, so something um, uh, we might um, study in a calculus class. Um, in this case, thought of as um, a deformation of um, a singularity, which I've drawn on the left. So the singularity x, y equals zero. And um, more generally, any um, equation set to zero, uh, we can um, replace with the same equation set to be uh, t, so in this picture, I'm um, taking a real uh, coordinate. And we observe that um, we started with something singular. This is a singular point here. And we ended um, with something um, smooth, this um, smooth surface that I've drawn on the, on the right. So this is... Um, a procedure that uh, you can do well, not just in algebraic geometry, but in differential geometry. Um, and on the other hand, we can um, form a resolution. Um, so in this case, it's um, a simple uh, matter of taking the two branches of the curve, um, the singular curve that I've drawn, um, Oh, yeah, I'm uh, calling it a curve, even though it's composed of two lines. Um, and I separate those um, uh, those branches. So I've just moved uh, this branch up to z equals epsilon and the other branch down to um, z equals uh, minus epsilon. So um, we have these... Um, uh, two uh, processes and in both cases uh, they make our space um, homologically uh, better behaved uh, so um, I'm um, thinking of that in terms of um, taking um, uh, sheaves on the spaces uh, so I could take a sheaf supported here and um, it would have a, um, a resolution by um, vector bundles. Um, and that would be the same at this point, a smooth point on the singularity. Um, 
But at the singular point, it will no longer be the case. So I'd have to get by with um, an infinite resolution um, by by vector bundles there. Uh, so, so the resolution and the smoothing, I think of as some um, homologically nice. Um, and um, oh, I need to uh, swap around. Sorry. Um, so my singularity is Y, and um, my resolution is X, and um, S is my smoothing. I'll maintain that um, notation through the talk. Uh, I will move on to examples in higher dimensions where I have um, some theorem which relates um, the homological algebra on X, the resolution, and the homological algebra on S, uh, the smoothing. So um, some definitions, because we want to work in a more general uh, setting. So I'll take um, a smoothing of uh, Y to um, be um, uh, space S, and um, I want um, the um, total space S to be smooth, and I want a map to uh, the affine line, so just the line with parameter T, such that uh, its fiber at T equals zero is Y, the thing that I'm smoothing, and its uh, fiber at other T is um, itself smooth. So in the case above, uh, Y is uh, given in blue, uh, but for um, T equals one, say, and get um, a hyperbola. Okay. Uh, so that's a smoothing. And a resolution for me is um, a, um, again, let's uh, swap. A resolution X of Y is um, a proper um, birational map. Um, so, so that means um, that I start with um, some Y with a singularity, and um, I modify it by um, um, inserting um, some extra points. So, in the case above, we just took. Um, their singularity like this, and turned the singular point into two points, each on a smooth, smooth branch. Uh, so that's one type of behavior you can have. Um, that's what occurs in dimension one. Mm. But um, let me uh, give as motivation an um, uh, example in dimension two. So I want to take now uh, Y is um, a, a quadric cone. So I'll write the equation like that. X squared plus Y squared minus C squared equals zero. So picture it like so. Uh, so um, my pictures are over R, but I'm now thinking over uh, C or um, over some um, other field. And consider a resolution which is given by uh, blowing up this um, this red point, so blowing up um, zero.
So this uh, this blow up is um, an operation which uh, takes a, um, a space, and um, if I'm just blowing up at a point, as in this case, it um, inserts something in the space dependent on the uh, on the local geometry. Um, so in this case. say e where e is um or p1 so um at least if i was working over c this would be um uh a riemann sphere And um, by inserting this P1, um, I can uh, resolve the singularity um, in the sense that um, in the picture on the right, there are a bunch of directions coming in um, and um, they're all meeting at that singular red point. Um, what the um, blue exceptional locus does is it... Um, uh, resolves all those directions. So depending on which direction you're coming in, there's going to be a point um, on the uh, blue exceptional locus uh, that corresponds to that uh, direction. And um, the result is that uh, you can be smooth in a neighborhood of the, um, the exceptional locus, indeed, indeed everywhere. So, so plan uh, relate uh, dx and uh, ds. Uh, smoothing um, where D means um, the uh, derived category of um, sheaves. Okay. Uh, so as these um, spaces are smooth, we can um, think of this as a um, category of um, complexes um, of vector bundles. So this category um, contains vector bundles, contains complexes of them. Um, it includes some um, information like um, um, intersections of um, divisors corresponding to vector bundles. Um, it has um, operations um, that um, you would expect for vector bundles, such as pullback. Um, but yeah, it also has some um, uh, further operations, which um, uh, you only have for sheaves. Um, so I'm going to, um, add, uh, um, because, um, there may be, um, people watching for these details, um, that I need some, um, notion of boundedness and, um, at some point I should take, um, coherent sheaves. But I won't worry too much about um, those details unless um, uh, people ask. And uh, let me say and study um, 
resulting um, symmetries of um, uh, dx. So let me uh, start to say more about um, um, what I mean there. So as an example of the sort of symmetry um, I'm interested in for a start. Uh, so... So a definition for this case, uh, it's called a spherical twist symmetry. So this is in the language of Seidel and Thomas. And they uh, developed a formalism for these functors. Uh, so functors say T, um, acting on the derived category uh, that have this form. So they take um, some object A. So you could think of um, say, um, a vector bundle on X here. And you form the following thing. Let's write it down and then comment on it. Yeah, uh, so um, consider a um, a vector bundle, and consider Holmes um, from. Um, that um or from some other object in this case we've taken o of e to that vector bundle um now if i take those harms and tensor with um the first object so this oe then i have um an evaluation morphism to a So this um, then forms uh, complex of vector bundles. So this is not quite right for what I've written because um, I've um, chosen as a first object OE. Uh, so this is um, a structure sheaf. Um, of E, so the trivial vector bundle on E, uh, considered um, as a sheaf um, on X. Uh, so this um, reveals um, um, a detail once you know that um, such a sheaf, it being um, torsion in the sense that um, there are um, um, functions you can multiply by um, on X, um, which will um, uh, kill this sheaf, you know, just because it's um, uh, supported just here. You can um, take... Um, a fiber coordinate, multiply that, and it will kill this sheaf. So that means homs here um, are uh, zero. But I'm actually doing a derived 
um, functor here. This is derived from. So um, calculates x, in fact. Uh, so um, extensions of um, OE and A. Okay, so that, and similarly, I have um, um, a left derived tensor. Um, it's actually what I'm putting together, putting together here. Okay. So, so this um, this work goes back to the um, early two uh, thousands, and what I'm um, showing you here is the, the first bit of a story, um, which has um, a bunch of applications. So we're. Um, well, studying um, uh, the um, um, symmetries of um, dx in its own right. Oh, yeah. So I, I should emphasize that this is um, uh, an auto equivalence of um, x that I'm writing. So this is useful to um, study um, bridge and stability on um, X. It's used to um, study um, like Gopakuma buffer invariance on X um, and other all sorts of uh, structures uh, somewhere between math and physics. And uh, well, this uh, same construction I've written down, I just wrote it down in one, one example, and I um, didn't explain um, all the assumptions that are needed. Um, but this uh, generalizes to um, K3 surfaces, um, CY3s, um, and so on. Okay, so so I show this because um, I want to um, uh, reinterpret it um, and uh, uh, put it in a a new context. So um, if um, uh, like the details of this formula um, are not clear, then um, please don't um, don't give up. Um, in some way, I'm going to present something that's um, that's more simple. Um, which is the main um, point of my talk. Okay, so so let's just uh, zoom back up and get another copy of this um, this map. So we can keep seeing this. Okay, that'll do. So I'm going to um, take uh, this map here as um, um, F. So from the resolution to the, the singularity, that will always be um, F. So let me explain um, my setup. I want um, a resolution um, f from um, x to y, which is um, of the form of um, the blow up in uh, 
some locus A. So in the example, um, A is just a point, um, and you can um, just keep thinking of that. I'll give more examples where A is just a point, um, but we're also in a more general setting. Okay, and then I have a diagram which I draw like this, or as before. So X is the resolution of Y, and um, S is um, the smoothing. And uh, Y um, is a hypersurface then in S. You know, so, so our smoothing was, by definition, um, one parameter. Okay, and then, um, so A is something that I blow up in Y. So let me write out the example that um, I take A to be uh, just the point zero in a Y. And um, I blow that up. Uh, that gives me my X. And in this case, and in general, I have uh, the exceptional locus of that uh, blow up, EAY. So in uh, the example, uh, EAY is um, uh, E. So just a projected line, or you can think of a Riemann sphere. Um, but um, let me give um, a, uh, a family of examples that this fits into. Uh, so that uh, we have some um, context for my theorem. So this would be um, example A. And uh, the family is indexed by... Um, uh, natural number n, uh, two or more, and that's um, that's the dimension um, in this case. So, I take y now to be uh, the zeros of um, a degree n homogeneous polynomial. So what we did before was a um, uh, homogeneous quadric polynomial. And we consider it as um, a singular cone in um, k to the n plus 1. So um, an n-dimensional uh, vector space over k. So our um, quadric cone is in three space, uh, but more generally we're in a higher space. And um, I still want to blow up zero, like so. And um, so I can consider uh, the blow up of my smooth space yeah, so this um, is um, given by inserting a um, uh, projective end space um, at the origin, and it uh, let me lets me calculate uh, what the um, uh, the blow up x in A looks like. Yeah, so I think this is a good time to draw the picture. Or um, n equals 2. So this, um, uh, this picture should come back.
when uh, I explain uh, the theorem that's coming up. So this is my sketch of K3, and we have um, uh, the origin, say, in red in there. Now let me uh, blow that up. So now I've got the blow up of the origin in K3. And this results in um, putting in a P2 there. So Y is still uh, the cone that we first drew. But now uh, we can make more precise sense of what I was saying about there being lots of um, uh, directions in the cone which are separated by the blow up. Because um, what does this um, P2 represent? Well, it represents um, all the uh, directions um, away from this um, origin point in K3. And some of those directions are on the cone. And it uh, transpires. What shall I do this with in blue? that those directions um, correspond to a conic MP2. Okay. So that's my um, uh, E and it's fibering. Um, over just a point in this case. Okay, so that's the setup I've got. And um, so I have a resolution um, and um, a smoothing. So we start with a singularity now in dimension two. And so the smoothing is um, three-dimensional and the resolution two-dimensional. And we have, I want to uh, focus on, let me go back to the setup for a moment. Um, we have um, a com composition map from the resolution to the smoothing. So let me add that to the setup. So call this composed map uh, G. And yeah, I'm also going to want a notation for this um, P, the, um, the map um, fibering the exceptional locus um, over uh, A, the locus that I've blown up. Uh, okay, so I'm now um, ready to start stating the way I relate um, the resolution and the smoothing. So first thing to say, um, as promised, have a functor of um, derived uh, push forward uh, G star from um, uh, DX uh, to DS. 
And in the other direction, I have, let me just raise it like this, um, pull back. And uh, these are um, adjoints. So, write it like this, the junction G star, uh, G star. And hence, we can define the following. Now, so this is um, a very natural um, object. Uh, so I'm, I mean, people have thought about this um, before. Um, what um, I'm doing uh, here, um, which I've not seen done uh, before, is um, uh, studying its um, um, um, properties in this geometric situation. So what do I take? Well, it's a bit similar to um, the uh, formula we wrote before uh, for T, that auto equivalence of um, our first example, um, but it's simpler. So um, hopefully easier um, to um, uh, take on. So imagine if I had A, a vector bundle, then I um, could push it down to S and um, then pull it back up. So that would be this. And I would have um, a canonical map uh, then to the uh, vector bundle I started with. So this is called the... Uh, the co-unit, or um, a component of the co-unit. And I can do this um, for every um, uh, vector bundle, um, for every um, object in the derived category, and um, put it together um, to get something that may be a symmetry. Um, so um, what I uh, prove is that under um, these... Um, um, assumptions, um, it is indeed a symmetry. So I'll state that in a theorem um, in a moment. But uh, first, um, some commentary. Uh, so um, a remark. If um, this uh, this push down um, was an equivalence, so it's not in this situation. If a G star is equivalence, then um, T um, T G star would be um, uh, zero. So we'd have a left adjoint um, uh, given by uh, a quasi-inverse to G star. Uh, so we claim we claim the uh, next and um, simplest Uh, behavior um, that um, TG star 
is an equivalence. So G star itself is not, but T G star is. And um, so this is how I phrase that the homological relation between um, X and S. Yeah, so I should say this this way of thinking um, is um, um, not um, due to me, um, far from it. Uh, so it goes back uh, to uh, uh, Seidel Thomas and um, uh, Rina Anno and um, Anno and uh, Lovinenko. So we say that um, a functor f is um, uh, spherical um, if uh, tf. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Um, I mean just the analog of um, what I've written for g star. If a goes to... Uh, so this would be uh, a left adjoint of F. So that um, is um, an equivalent um, plus some uh, dual condition uh, involving a right adjoint. And that's um, important, but let me um, skip it for now. Okay. Now, so we're going to be um, uh, studying the contraction twist at the top. Uh, let me um, relate this to um, the formula I gave at the beginning by taking um, in example A uh, the following functor. So take derived category of a point. So you could think of the point that we blew up um, or from a, another point of view, you could um, say we're talking about um, uh, vector bundles at a point. So that's the same thing as um, vector spaces. Um, so um, this is just um, a category of um, the complexes of vector spaces. Um, and so whatever the object is that generates that, however you think of it, the, the one-dimensional vector space or, or the rank one vector bundle, um, I have a functor that takes this to OE in um, DX. And um, you can check that this is um, uh, spherical. At least um, you can check the part of the definition that, that I've given. And uh, that indeed um, TF, so this equivalence that um, um, I'm claiming you um, you get by the construction um, in the middle, is, um, is the same as the T I wrote down. Uh, from above. Okay, so um, maybe I can just do um, uh, the beginning of that um, claim. Or did I um? Do, do, do, do. Okay, so sorry, I got some um. Uh, some things the wrong way around. So I want um, TG upper star and um, um, I want to take a right adjoint of that. Okay, sorry for this. Uh, so the formula is uh, this 
Um, so that's necessary to match up with um, what I wrote at the beginning um, in the following sense, that FR, so the right adjoint of um, this functor F that I'm writing now, um, that is going to be um, the derived HOM. from OE. Okay. So that's one of the uh, stages in that um, verification. Uh, so, uh, so why um, uh, consider these um, um, sorts of functors at all? Um, so one answer is um, that um, um, you're interested in this geometric situation. Um, another answer is more categorical. So let me... Um, um quickly state that um so i'd um been taking uh the um derived category of sheaves and thinking of it as a triangulated category um in some um slightly different but related setting um of a um dg category if i have any uh, phi um, equivalence, um, auto equivalence of D, uh, I should maybe say quasi equivalence, then there exists F um, spherical from, um, well, let me write it like this there exists. C um, another DG category and a spherical functor F uh, such that this symmetry is um, of the form TF Uh, so this is um, Judas Siegel, Ed Siegel. So in other words, um, if I'm interested in uh, symmetries of um, categories like the one I'm looking at, um, they're of this nature. So um, let me state um, my theorem, and um, that will probably bring me to um, questions, um, because, uh, yeah, I'm not used to um, um, talks by uh, Zoom anymore, uh, so I'm aware, um, as uh, I remember being aware quite a lot uh, in the pandemic that I'm not sure which parts of uh, this talk are connecting with you and which not. Okay, so so first, given setup, um, then uh, G star is uh, spherical. So that was my claim. Um, so that's um, homological re relation between uh, smoothing and um, the resolution. And um, then theorem A, let N uh, be the codimension of A, which I blow up uh, 
Um, so in our examples, that was two or more. And um, put D um, to be, um, so let me just write it in words, um, uh, derive category um, of objects of compactly supported. Um, objects. So an example would be um, a sheaf on that exceptional locus because that's compact. Okay. Um, and then I get the following. So a spherical functor GI, which starts in the locus I blow up, pulls up to the exceptional locus of the blow up and then uh, pushes forward into X. And uh, there's one further thing that I um, twist by um, um, a twisting sheaf, a um, natural line bundle on that um, exceptional locus. All right. And yeah, so that's also spherical. So now we have um, two different sorts of things which um, induce some um, uh, symmetries of dx. Um, so firstly, um, g star. And uh, secondly, this big um, g. And what do we discover? That they're related. So this... Um, twist of G star, which captures um, how uh, the uh, resolution and the smoothing are related, that has the following formula. Okay, so it's a bit, I need to add some correction term. So basically you should think it uh, think of it as just the product of all the big Gs. Um, So it's the normal bundle of X, um, let's say, in um, the blow up um, of the smoothing in A. Um, so a sort of correction term. OK. Um, so let me just um, finish with the. Um, n equals two example, what does this give? So the right hand side is um, the twist associated to um, the uh, exceptional locus and um, the twist associated to OE2. And um, this correction term, which let's let's ignore um, for now. Um, so, in summary, we have um, um, this uh, contraction twist. Yeah, uh, which explains um, how resolution and smoothing are related, and we have um, a calculation of it. Um, okay, so that's a good point to stop. Thank you very much for your um, interest. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, any questions or comments? So maybe I will ask one question. <laughs> but I mean, this is kind of, I don't know if it is related or not. Uh, when you were uh, uh, giving, and uh, there was one part with uh, that uh, uh, DG categories. There is one uh, where was that? I guess one uh, page above. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Siegel's theorem. Oh, yeah. Yes. So we have this auto equivalence phi acting uh, uh, of the DG category. When I see this, I somehow, since you are an expert, good point, place to ask. Is there some sort of Galois theory for DG categories? Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a very good question. And um, I think I do not know. Um, yeah. Um, so in some cases, when a group acts on a category, um, we can um, uh, phrase it in these terms. So uh, what what do I mean? Um, I mean, we have um, a bunch of um, um, symmetries um, and say they act by a braid group. Um, so this might have come up in um, uh, Kuwagaki's um, talk. Um, so um in that case um i can um take the generators of the break group and um using this um theorem of siegel for instance i can say each of these corresponds to a spherical object and the fact that they act by a brain group corresponds to more structure on that um if um you take some other group um I don't know so much what to do. Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I mean, if um, if they commute, um, then um, I know what to do. Um, but um, yeah, for instance. To take a simple case, if there's um like torsion, um if I have um some um equivalence, um uh some power of which is um, naturally isomorphic to the um identity, um then uh, I don't know what extra structure that puts on the spherical functor. Um that might not be that hard, but never thought about it. I think it's uh an interesting uh, direction. Uh, any more questions or comments? So the uh, lesson that we should learn from uh, the seminar, at least what I understand is that smoothing and uh, how is that? Uh, uh, resolution and smoothing, they are related to each other. And uh, you have written down some very explicit formula how they are related in the end. Uh, it is very impressive. I mean, I am really uh, impressed. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for your, oh. your interest. We thank you um, very much. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, uh, let's thank our speaker once more. Yeah. So uh, next speaker is... Uh, it will be next week we will have our talk. Uh, uh, and uh, the speaker will be Merlin Christ uh, at uh, Université Paris, I believe. Uh, he moved to Paris, I believe. Uh, and uh, hope to see all of you uh, next week. Yeah. yeah. See you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. İlker görüşürüz. Bye bye. So I'm stopping the recording.